Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. May the word of the Lord minister to our hearts today. The title of our preaching today is Don't Waste Your Time. Would you say that with me? Don't waste your time. I don't want to waste your time. No one wants to waste their time. I take that from verse 16. It says, Making the best use of the time. Don't waste your time. Consider this quotation from Harvey McKay. You probably can read it. It says that time is free, but it's priceless. Right? You can own it, but you can use it. You can keep it, but you can spend it. Now, listen. Once you've lost it, you can never get back. That's true, right? That's true. Time is so precious. Time is so precious. You can use it, you can spend it, but when you lose it, you can get you can go back. You lose it. You can never you can never get it back. The Apostle Paul writing to the Christians in Ephesus. The Apostle Paul appreciates and understands the price lessness of time. He tells them, make the best use of the time. Sinasabi po niya, make the most of your time. Make the most of every opportunity. Make every time counts. Do not waste your time. In Psalms 39.4, it says, show me, O Lord, my end. And the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Do you know what the word fleeting means? Fleeting means it's temporary. Fleeting means it's, it's just passing away. Here today, gone tomorrow. And James is telling us the same thing. In James 4.15 says, What is your life? For you are a mist. What is a mist? A vapor. What kind of, when, when, you, when you book something, you see a vapor, right? Makikita natin yung uso, right? Now you see it, now you don't, right? That's life. It's so short, it's so fleeting. Now you see, and that appears for a little time, and then vanishes. How many of you agree that life on earth is so short? Amen? It is so short. Now you see, now you don't. That's true to everyone. The cousin of Sister Kel, you probably know this, right? The brother of Oda. She was just 35 years, no, 35 years old. He passed away last Friday. 35 years of it. So short. Sister Gina's brother in law, what is age around 40s? Mid 40s, right? Mid 40s, passed away. And maybe you probably know someone who passed away in earlier age, right? Like, even, even if you live like 60 or 70 or 80 or 90, what is 90? It's just 10 years is just like, like that. It's just like yesterday we, we, we were here in Canada, we 
when we did in Canada, now we, we, we are here 12 years already. Then it's just like that. So, so fast. It, it just vanished away. We're now on our eight year anniversary, amen? And it's just like yesterday, right? It's just like yesterday. Then we say, well, I'm translated to Sudafi. What can I do? I'm blessed. I'm alone. The question is, how do we use the time God is giving us? Ano po ba natin pinagamit yung oras, the time that God is, using, is giving us? Where do we use our time? What occupies our time? Paul says, make the best use of the time. Make the most of every opportunity. There's a Chinese proverb that, that says, opportunity knocks only once. Once you lose the opportunity, it's gone. So make the most when you have the opportunity. Do it! When you have the time to love your wife, love your wife, love your husband, love your, your children. Make the most of every opportunity. Maybe tomorrow they'll come. You never know. When you have the opportunity to be kind to other people, do it! Una po natin na hintayin, you know, you know, mahaba pa pa naman, you know, I can still... No! No one holds the time. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the best use of your time. Paul is saying that to the Christians in, in Ephesus. Now how do we do that? How do we make our everyday counts? How do we make the best use of our time? That's the question. And Paul, Paul gives us the reason, the, the, the reason and, and, and the things that we need to recognize so that we make the best use of our time. The first thing is this. Know the days are evil. Say that with me. Know the days are evil. It's, it, it, it's there. It's, you see there. Paul is saying, make the best use of the time because the days are what? Even we need to know that we need to recognize that that our days are evil. What does that mean? And please say me now. In verse 15, it says, "Look carefully how you walk. Be careful how you live. Why? Because the days are evil. What does it mean? It means the things that we see around us." The culture that we live in, the lifestyle that you see around you, they are influenced by evil. We live in a fallen world. Do you recognize that? Do you recognize how evil the world is today? Can you imagine in the U.S. passing law na pwede pa rin, pwede pa rin i-abort? Pinanganak na? Buhay na yung bata, pwede pa rin i-abort? Oh. My goodness! This is so evil already! You must have heard the news in the Philippines. One year old nirate! My goodness! Can you just imagine how evil the world is? The days are evil. And Paul here is giving a warning to all of us. The days are evil. The world that you live in is, is evil. And it's important for us to recognize that warning. Because if we don't recognize this, if we don't recognize the days are evil, we will fall into a trap. Trap. And the trap is this. Listen, listen to him. This is the trap that we call, we use when we fall into this trap. Listen, this is a trap. Do what everyone is doing. That's a trap. Do what everyone is doing. That's a dangerous trap. Meaning, when you, when, when, when you do what everyone is doing, what happens in basis for the 
basis of how we live, the basis of how we use our time. The basis is on everyone, is what everyone is doing. That's a dangerous trap because the days are evil. People in the world are influenced by evil. We need to recognize that. And when Paul speaks of these days being evil, he's, he sees a particular sin, particular uh, wickedness that we see around us. Look with me in verse 3 and 5. Verse 3 and 5, it says there, But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness, say, say that word with me, covetousness, covetousness, must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no guiltiness, nor foolish talk, or good joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now, isn't that what we see in the world that we live in today? There is this sin of covetousness. What is covetousness? Covetousness is a strong desire to acquire more and more material possessions, or to possess more things that other people have. It is a strong desire. Right? A person is covetous, he has a strong desire to have more and more and more. Hindi po ba yung nakikita natin sa mundo natin ngayon? Right? May asawa na. Gusto pa ng pangalawa. Sparang pangalawa ko doon. Di ba contento? Right? Sexual immorality, impurity, covetousness, more and more of material possessions. We will not be surprised why God, through Moses, gave us the one of the Ten Commandments, right? What is the what is that commandment? You must not covet. You must not covet your neighbor's house. Mm. Hello? Lupin ng bahay niya. Dapat may ganyan din ako. Right? You must not covet your neighbor's wife. Men, are you listening? Uy, mas maganda yun sa misis ko ah. Hmm? Right? Parang mas mabait siya kayo sa misis ko ah. Especially when, when, when you have problems with your wife and then you are in the office, meron nung secretary, whatever, mas maganda, mas malambing, buti pa siya na yung tindo na mo, asawa ko na kung ayon din yan. <laughs> right? Do not covet your neighbor's wife or the male or female servant or ox, or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Do you see that picture there? Meron na siyang isdai, you know? That guy has ready, you know? Meron na siyang mga isdai. But nakita niya yung kapitbahay niya, he has a bigger fish. And that's why, I want that! I want that! So the question is, where do we base our lifestyle? Let's ask ourselves, but why is it that we can't get contented? Bakit po kaya? Amen po ba? Can we relate to this? There are times that we are not contented, right? Why can't we be satisfied? Why is it that we always want to have something bigger? Something better, something faster, something more comfortable, something more fashionable, something more admirable. Bakit kaya? Kailangan natin ito. Kasi ito yung uso ngayon. Right? Kailangan natin. Kailangan di 
tayo na uhuli. Kailangan mag-aaral natin ba ang gamit natin sa bahay? Kung mo kami pa yun natin, tagaaral ng tas tayo, may tatibin natin, di pwede yun. Kailangan lagi bago. Why do I have the last time? Kailangan lagi bago. Kailangan. Isn't it coming from the world? Eh, may po ba? Yung mga tao, yung mga kasama natin sa workplace, their colleagues at work, they're telling you, ay, bago yung aking TV, ay, bago yung aking kotse, I have a new car, I have a faster laptop, I have a faster iPhone, I have a better iPhone. We see it are in TV commercials, right? Do you know that TV commercials make you want what you don't need? Amen? Pag ganunod ka, hindi mo makailangan eh. But it makes you, I want that. As if you need that. Well, in fact, you don't really need it. And then, if you don't have it, you have a feeling of self-pity. Buti pa sila meron, buti pa sila meron, ako wala, ako wala. Makes you so pity. Where do we get that lifestyle? Huwag kang tanong, wow, dali, wala ko nga na, at sila meron. And so, so what do we do? When we have that feeling, what do we do? We work hard, amen? Amen? We work hard. We work, work, work. Hindi na tayo makontento sa isang trabaho. We want another job, we want another job. Why? Because we want to buy something. Right? We work, work, work. We buy, buy, buy. Kaskas dito, kaskas doon. Amen? And then pay, pay, pay. And then suffer, suffer, suffer. Right? Isn't that true? That's true. That's true. When, when you're not careful now to use your credit card, oh, ang laki ng aking, uh, what do you call that, limit card? 10,000 na tayo ito. Oh, 10,000. Do you know that it's not yours? It's not yours. If you don't have money in the bank, your limit in your credit card is not yours. Put it in your heart, in your mind, it's not yours. But that's the lifestyle we see in the world. More, 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 bigger, 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 buy, 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 pay, pay, pay. So you use your time to get what you want. Covetousness. You want more and more and more. To our youth, perhaps, wala pa kayong work, di ba? But just the same, we, we have this heart that is covetous also. You want more, more, more. You want more attention, right? You want more appreciation. You also want more, you know? You want to learn more, 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 more. There's still covetousness also in your heart. So we need to guard our lives. Don't waste your time. Don't be like the people of the world in Romans 12, 2. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. Don't be like the people of this world. So, how do we live? How, how, how should we live? How can we make the best use of our time? Knowing the days are evil. Second, we need to understand this. We need to know and seek what the will of the Lord is. You see that in verse 17. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Meaning, when you want to make the best use of your time, we must seek the will of the Lord. We must understand ano po ba ang kanooban ng Diyos sa ating buhay. So we do not base our lifestyle with what we see around us. We base our lifestyle in the Word of God. This is how we know the will of God. Amen po ba? This is how we will know the will of God. When we meditate on it day and night. When we participate in Bible studies. 
So I encourage you all be part of our life group meetings. That's where you will grow in, in, in knowing the Lord, in knowing His ways. And of course, in the preaching of your word, of the word of God. We know, we become to we, we become aware of what the will of the of, of God is. We must ask this question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Anyone? Are you asking those questions? Lord, what? You're in a situation. Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? Where do you want me to go? When you go to the left, Lord, I will go to the left. When you go to the right, Lord, I want to go to the right. Meaning you want to follow the Lord, right? We want to follow His ways and His will. Now, how would you know? How would you know if what you're doing, if you're not going to it, is in line with the will of God? How do you know if it's in line with the word of God? I urge you to ask this, at least these three questions. These three questions will probe, will expose if this, what you're doing is in line with the word of God. The first thing that we need to ask, will it glorify God? Do we ever ask that question? Will, if I do this, will it glorify God? The Bible says, this is the will of God, that in whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, do it all to the what? glory of God. This is the will of God. We need to understand that this is the plan of God in our lives. That whatever we do in life, we do it for His glory. Amen, Kuba? Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Meaning God created all things for His glory. Para sa kanyang kapurihan. And so God created us. Amen? God saved us. Amen, Kuba? God saved us. God rescued us for us to give Him glory. We need to understand this is the will of God. That in whatever I do, I'll bring glory to God. Whatever you do. Now, most of us spend the most of our time in the workplace. And Cuba, yeah? At least we spend eight hours. Some of you spend more, more than eight hours in the workplace. Now, if you understand what the will of God in your workplace that it's not just about earning money. Amen? It's not just about earning money. That's not the will of God. It's not just about money to pay your bills. But you are there in the workplace to what? To give glory to God. To honor the Lord. Do you think there's a difference if you come to work with this understanding that I'm here at work to give God the glory. Do you think there would be a difference? May meron po kaya pagkakaiba when you understand this, this, this will of God? I believe so. I believe so. See, when many of us, of course, you know, many of us will say, you know, Monday na naman, di ba? Oh, you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it. You do it. Right? Right? It's so difficult. But when, when, when we have this understanding, Lord, you, you gave me this job so that I can serve you there, so that I can honor you there, there is a difference in our desire, in our hearts. Now we come to our work. We come to our work with such excitement, Lord, I can give glory to you in this place. Lord, you put me in this place to give you glory, oh God. So what do you do? What do you do? You give your best, and You give your best at work. Not for you to be promoted, you know, not, but for you to give glory to God. And whatever you do, you give glory to God. So you give your best, you give your, 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 your excellence work. For the glory of God. Now, may mga times wala ang boss, right? What do you do pag wala ang boss? Oh, when, the, when, the, when the mouse is away, the cat 
What? Ah, balita. Kwenta ka? Is a way. The mouse will play. Pag wala ang boss, ah! Facebook. Yan, mga nangyayang yan. Teleserye po eh. But if you know, in the workplace, you are serving God every minute, every day counts. You make the most of your time because you are there not just to earn money to pay bills. You are not just there to get money. You are there to serve the Lord. It is the Lord God you are serving. Ano po ba? It is the Lord Christ you are serving. When we understand it, it makes a lot of difference. You don't waste your time in the office, in the workplace. You make the most of your time when in your heart you want to serve the Lord. Di po ba yung nangguin ang Lord sa atin? Acts 1.8, it says, Jesus said, You shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. When we serve the Lord, we display the Lord. Sa ating buha. We display Him. Nakikita ng mga tao, ay, Christian ito. Ay, you know, serve the Lord. We serve the Lord, we display the Lord, we make the most of our time. Amen. Pakalawa po, it's good to ask, will it make me more like Jesus? If I do this, will it make me more like Jesus? It's very clear in Romans 8, 20 and 29, before the foundation of the world, ito yung design. This is God's design for you and me. Listen, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His Purpose. What is his purpose? For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined before the, before the foundation of the world to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. We need to understand this is the will of God even from the beginning of time that we become more and more like Jesus. You, you need to understand this, that even right now, in your situation right now, good and bad, in your situation right now, God is working in your life so that He may transform you in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Yes, but that's God's way. That's God's way. When, 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 when the gold are being purified, it goes through the fire. God allows us to go through fire because God is working in us. So that, listen, so that we don't waste those moments. Many of us are just like, Lord, I want, I want this to pass away. I want, I want, Lord, take me out of this situation. Take me out of this moment, Lord God. I don't like this. But when we understand this, that God, is, His design, His will is so that we will be more like Jesus, we will make the most of every opportunity. We will make the most of every situation we are in. You may be in a bad situation. You may be in a tough situation. But when we understand this, we don't run away from God. We don't run away. We don't question God. God, why are you doing this to me? You don't waste the time of, oh, you know, I'm going to church. You know, you know, I'm going to pray. You know, I'm going to pray. You know, I'm going to pray. What happens if you do that? You waste your time. You miss the opportunity. This is the opportunity God has given you so that you will become more like Jesus. When we only fix our eyes on Jesus, when we trust His promises, when we come to Jesus and trust in the Lord with all our hearts, the promise of God is that He will lead you. The promise of God is He will provide for you. The promise of God is He will be with you. But in a sample situation na yun, we, we don't experience that. We don't experience the nearness and the closeness of God. Kasi we wala'y kain. 
Huwag kang hihibalay. Go through. Go through the situation. Believing that God has a purpose. God has a plan. And His good plan and His good purpose for you and me is that our lives will become more and more like Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is so beautiful. We sang that a while ago. He is more than wonderful. He is glorious. There's like Jesus. He is so loving. He's so gracious. He's so forgiving. He's so humble. He's so gentle. He's all knowing. He's so beautiful. God. Can you imagine this? God wants us to become more like Him. That's a blessing beyond all measure. Hindi po ba? Hindi po ba? Amen po ba? There's no greater blessing, my friend. There's no greater blessing on earth. Huwag po tayo magpadaya. We are in a world where people, you know, ang, ang, ang gusto ng tao, gusto ko nito, gusto ko niyan. Bili mo kong to, bili mo kong yan. You know, God's not God's design. God's will is for us to be more like Jesus, so don't waste the opportunity, don't waste the time you are in right now. Ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, I put my trust in you. Lord, I surrender to you. That's Christ-like. That is Christ-like. Before, when Jesus was near the cross, Ano po sinabi ng Lord? Father, sabi niya. If it's possible that this cup pass over me not, but not my will, but yours be done. When we begin to say that, Lord, not my will anymore, but your will be done, you are being transformed to be like Jesus. Not my will anymore, Lord, but your will be done. You become more and more like our Savior. Jesus. Thirdly, does it have eternal significance? Does it have eternal significance? Colossians 3 2 says, Set your minds on things above, on heavenly things, not on earthly things. Now, God's will for all of us. Is not is that we don't live for this world. Many people are, are living for this world. Ito ang kanilang anak. Ito ang kanilang buhay dito sa mundo. And that's why they want this, they want that. They want to secure their future because this is their permanent place. But not Christians, not those who follow the Lord. This is not our home. Even to God. We are just passing through. This is not our home. We are just passing through. We are just passing through. Our home, our citizenship is in heaven. You are blessed if you are a Canadian citizen. Right? But there is no blessing that is greater than being citizens of heaven. Set meaning we, we, we consider what are this, the things that have eternal significance. Look at this, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. We do not lose heart, says Paul, though our outer self is wasting away. Amen? How many of us are feeling this? Our outer self, your body is wasting away. Madali na tayo mapagod ngayon. Madali, Lord, diba? Madali na sa mga itang likod natin. It's wasting away. Wala ng buhok. Yeah. Wala na yung dati natin yung lahat ng biker. Wala na. But sabi niya, we do not lose so hard, we're not discouraged even though these things happen. Why? Ang, ang, ang focus ni Paul is this, our inner self. Hallelujah. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal way of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, 
but to the things that are unseen. <clears throat> For the things that are seen are transient temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. What Paul is saying here is this, set your eyes on the things that are eternal. This body eventually will waste away. Whether you like it or not. Even when we take care of our body, and we must, and we should, but eventually this body will waste. Eventually it will go weak. Eventually this heart will stop. Paul says, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. But I have a discouraged and not even like me sakit. But I'm not doing that, but I'm going to have. You know, there's a family here, you know, told me two weeks now, three weeks now, all the doing it to the boys, the boys, the family, the baby, the baby. I'm going to discourage you, right? Right? Why do you do that? That's discouraging. Paul says, do not be discouraged. Understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is the inner self. The inner self is the one that is eternal. This body will waste away, but the soul, the inner self, is eternal. What do we do with this inner self? Pinabakain natin ang ating katawan three times a day. Amen? Sometimes more than three times a day. You know, we take care of this body and that is good. But how about the inner self? Are you feeding the inner self? That is eternal. Are you taking care of the inner self? Are you guarding the inner self? Right? We need to take care of the inner self. It has to be renewed day by day. So we ask, is the thing I'm doing have eternal significance? Hindi na gawa po ba natin may eternal significance? Meaning, meron bang may connection pa sa eternity? Your work today, does it have does it have connection with eternity? Now, if you just look at at face value, parang wala. Di ba? Ano naman ang connection ng aking, you know, pagkukomputer, pag-enter ng data, o o pagkukuha ng blood work sa tao. That has to do with eternity. Now, listen to this. When you do it for the glory of God, it has connection with eternity. The Bible says, when you do things for the glory of God, your labor is not in vain. Kahit simple lang po yung ginagawa natin sa buhay. Kahit ikaw ay nagkatapon lamang ng pasura. By the way, dito mga patasasweldo lang. Unato lang lang yun. I mean, whatever you do in this life, be or small. Right? Hindi po lang ang pwede sabihin, hey, housewife lang ako, pasta lang yung significance na sa eternity. Tiga ugas na ako ng pinggan, tiga luto, tiga linis ng bahay. What that has to do with eternity? There is! When you do it for the glory of God, you are serving Christ and you're displaying Christ. Amen po ba? There is eternal significance when you do it for the Lord. Make the best use of our time. We should recognize that days are given. We must understand the will of God. Lastly, sabi mo, be controlled by the Spirit. We see that. In verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord your God. Be joined with your heart. Giving thanks always and for everything to God. The Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Now notice the comparison. Notice the comparison here. 
Paul says, do not get drunk with wine. Sino na sa atin ang nalalasin? Baka magabi, may lasit dito ha. Wala nang siguro no. Do not get drunk with wine. What happens? What happens if you get drunk? You're intoxicated. What happens? Ano pa nang yan? Nahihilo? What else? Alam mo ba yung sinasabi mo pag nasin ka? Pag hindi? Nalasin ka ba nun? <laughs> when, when, when you... Intoxication is defined as the condition of having physical or mental control markedly diminished by the effects of alcohol. Meaning that the diminish of our control. And that's why you can say things na pagka hindi ka lasing, hindi masabi. Right? Binagagawa tayo, you know, na, na something na kung hindi ka lasing, hindi mo nagagawa. Why? Because you are being affected, being controlled by the spirit of alcohol, not the Holy Spirit of God. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It's about the spirit taking full control of your life. When your spirit feels, the Holy Spirit controls your life. You're not in control anymore. You're not in full control anymore. And that's why when you have the power, when you have the control of the Spirit, you can do things that you cannot normally do. What's that? For example, the power to resist temptations. Right? Ladies, right? You go to the mall. And dami temptation, right? Pag hindi ka fit ng Spirit, ganda nito ah. Uy, discounted to. Uy, ganda. Diba? Sino may control? Tayo may control. We do what we want to do. But when we are controlled by the Holy Spirit and we understand the will of God, you go to the ball and say, Lord, kailangan ko ba ito, Lord? You ask the Lord, right? Kailangan ko ba ito, Lord? Can I glorify you if I buy this? Will this make me more like Jesus? <laughs> Will this... Will this have any impact to eternity? Right? We need to ask those questions. We need to understand the will of the Lord. We need to do this for Christ. Being filled with the Spirit gives you the power. Freedom for covetousness. You want to be free from being covetous? Ang hirap kaya, di ba? Ang hirap kasi nakikita natin eh. Kapibahay meron, gusto mo rin. Right? Ang tao meron, I want this. Without the feeling of the Spirit, without the control of the Holy Spirit, we will do what others do. We will do what others do. We will fall into a trap. And we will not make the best use of our time. Notice what happens when you're filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing, making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always for everything to God. Lagi tayo nagpapasalama when you're filled by the Spirit. Right? Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. What does the Holy Spirit do? When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit draws us to fellowship with one another. Amen? Pagka nato po yung desire, I want to fellowship with the brothers and sisters of Christ, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to encourage one another. That's the, that's the, that's the leading and, and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Pagka tinatamad tayo, the Holy Spirit yun. Ayaw ko mati ng Bible study. Hindi Holy Spirit yun. Right? Ayaw ko muna mag-church kaya. Hindi Holy Spirit yun. For sure. Right? Because the Holy Spirit draws us together. Singing uh, with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing, making melody to the Lord. The, the Holy Spirit draws us to worship God. Ito yung ginawa natin kanina. We were drawn to 
worship the Lord is singing praises and, 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 and worship to our God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. You're told to be thankful for everything. Baka lagi po tayong complain na complain, complain na complain, hindi po Holy Spirit yun. Right? The Holy Spirit, even you're going through tough times, Lord, thank you. For I know you have a plan for me. Lord, thank you. For I know how I will come to the question. Lord, thank you. Thank you. That's the work of, your, of the Holy Spirit. You are drawn to serve others, to be submissive. Said to be submitting to one another out of reverence to Christ. We're drawn to just encourage and, 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 and respect and, and serve one another. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Pagka tayo po ay nag-aaway-aaway, pagka tayo ay, ay you know, nag, 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 sakitan sa isa't isa, hindi po Holy Spirit yun. Amen. The Holy Spirit worked in us to bring us into unity and love. Submitting to one another, serving one another. Amen. Amen. Let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. For without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, we will be on our own. How are you using time, my friends? Sampu natin kinagamit ang ating mga oras. Dalawa lang naman, di ba? There are two, two ways to use your time. Either you make the most of it, or you waste it. Sampo tayo Are we making the most of our time? Or are we wasting Life is short. Make it up to Life is short. Make the most. Kung maglilingkod tayo sa Lord, maglilingkod na tayo ngayon. Kung, kung, kung gusto natin magdala ng kaluluwa sa pagdala, magdala na tayo kung ano. Mag-invite na po tayo sa ating anniversary. Let's be courageous. Una tayo tayo mahiya. Hindi may hiya ako pastor. You know, huwag tayo mahiya. Just bring. When you invite them, you are blessing them. You are bringing them to the presence of God. You are allowing blessing to come to this to these people. I don't, I don't get it at all, right? Let's invite people. Make the most of our opportunity and time. If you don't have personal relationship with Christ, now is the time of salvation. If you think parang wala akong relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, ask. Ask. I'm here to help you. The council are here, are here to help you. You know, we want you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not waste our time. Now is the time of salvation. I want to share with you this famous quote from C.P. Stan. The worship people will come and we're going to close here. One life, only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Can, can we read that together? This is a very important quotation. I want to leave it in your heart. One life. Can you read that with me? One life. Only one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Let's, let's just meditate on that for a while. Only one life. We don't have two lives. Only one. Only one. Only what's done for Christ. Nobilis po ang oras. Time is running. Time is fast. Running. And I tell you this. Listen to this. Yes. A 
unless you make a radical decision for Christ. Unless you make a radical decision for Christ, your life will remain the same. Round and round and round. Unless you make a radical decision for Christ, you will be on the track of work, 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 buy, 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 pay, pay, pay. God's plan for your life is better than mine. God's plan for your life is much, much better than that. So make the most of the time God is saying. Hindi po natin alam kung kailan tayo may kapuban. You never know. I don't know. Maybe next week, wala na ako dito. I'm making the most of my time now. I'm trying to wake you up, church. I may not be here preaching next week. And you may not be here too. I mean, no one knows. No one knows the time. Make the most of your time. I urge you, my friends. Make a decision for Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus now. Repent. Turn away from your sins. And follow Jesus now. The urgency to, to, to come to Jesus, to follow Jesus, is here, right now. Wag po namin sabi, Pastor, bata pa ako, ayaw pa mag-serve sa Lord, sayang naman ang buhay ko. Sayang ang buhay mo, pag hindi ka naglikod sa Panginoon ngayon. Masasayang ang buhay natin if we don't serve God, if we don't follow Jesus Christ. Imagine, and this will happen, one day we will all face God. We will stand before God face to face. And the Lord will ask us, Anong ginawa mo sa iyong buhay? God will ask you, What have you done with the time I've given you? Hindi mo nakakaya. It's so embarrassing ko. Just to say, God, I work, 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 and I buy, 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 and I pay, pay, pay. Lord, yan mo. Laki ng bahay na nabili ko. Gawa ng kotse na binibig ko, Lord, ha? You know? Lord, laki ng TV ko na ibigay mo ba, Lord? You know, yun ang achievement ko, Lord. Can we say that? Without being embarrassed with a God who has given you life. God has given you time. And now is the time. Now is the time. Let's not waste our time any longer. Let's give our life, or surrender our lives to Jesus. Amen to that. Amen to that. Make a decision that you will honor God, honor Jesus, all the days of your life. Make a decision. Lord, I'm now giving my life to you. Kung hindi pa nakikilala, Lord, sabihin niyo, Panginoon, iniiwan ko na po ang aking mga kasalanan. Forgive me, Lord God. Come to my heart, Lord. Come to my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I want to live for you. I want to make the best use of the time you have given me, Lord. The best of the life you have planned for me, Lord God. Ayaw ko na po sayangin ang aking oras, ang aking parang I want to give it all to you. I want to dedicate everything to you. I want to surrender all to you, Lord. If that is the desire of your heart. 
Would you express that to the Lord here? Just say it. Just raise up your hand. Lord, I want to hear from you. That's me. I want to live for you. I want to live for you. I want to use my life, my time, Lord, to honor you, to give you glory. I want to serve you now, Lord. I don't want to waste my life. Come on. That is the desire of your heart. Just lift it up. Lift it up to the Lord. Lift it up. Make a decision, my friends. Make a decision. That decision is not in vain. That's the best decision you could ever have in your life. The decision to give your life to Jesus. Can you give me a little bit of a What? Sa trabaho? Sa boss mo? What will you give your life? Who is worthy? Who is worthy? But the one who gave you life. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, we allow you to continue your work in my heart, in our lives. We believe, Lord, your word will not come back to you void will accomplish its purpose. Panginoon, alam niyo po yung puso ng mga narinito ngayon na hapang ang Lord God. My prayer, Lord, is that all of us, all of us, will truly surrender our lives to you. We'll make that radical decision that no longer we will waste our lives with our prayer. But we will make the most of every opportunity to serve you, to follow you, to honor you. I pray for this whole week that will come upon us. But you know, Lord, we pray that you will take good care of your people. Lord, we pray that our lives will truly display the glory of Christ. Us. Make us your servants. Lord, hayaan niyo po, tulungan mo kami na makapagdala kami ng mga kanon mo sa iyong That our lives will have an impact, Lord, to the people around us. Lord God, Lord, ikaw po mamuna sa amin. And continue to assure us that our labor in the Lord will never be in vain. You will reward, Lord, you will reward those who serve you and who is faithful to you. Thank you, Father. Give you now all the glory and all the honor. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.